<laughs> All right, great. Thank, thanks again, Tanya, and everyone at the session today. Um, Painter Essentials is really a great way to begin your digital uh, painting journey, and, and it can, I think what it can really do is catapult you to that next step if you're considering going to Corel Painter Professional. And in the sense of pure painting with Painter Essentials, it's a great way to begin your journey because it really sets you up, gives you a good understanding of the basic interface. So if you decide to go up to Painter someday, you're not gonna feel like a stranger when you open it up for the first time. So today I wanna share with you some of the brushes included in the Bob Ross uh, brush packs for Painter Essentials. And as Tanya said, it's a really a great time now to get them because they'll be gone forever. What I want to do is uh, go over this painting, um, this sketch with you and develop a painting from it. But what I want to try and do is use some of those brushes that I'm talking about in these particular brush sets today. So you get an idea on how to develop a painting with them. Uh, some of my favorites for creating trees and clouds and things like that. And you can see in my interface here, I've started off with uh, opening up a few of the panels that I like to use on a regular basis, whether I'm working in Painter Essentials or in Painter. Color sets are always essential, so having those up and the little floating palette is a nice little option for you to have. All of these can be opened up from the window menu and you'll notice that you have all these options such as the toolbox, a property bar, your color, mix, mixers, navigator, photo painting, and layers. Make sure you have your layers open um, uh, when you're working and if you're working along with me today as well. Um, I started off this painting uh, called Enchanted Path uh, using uh, just a basic sketch and working on a layer and you can see that I've added a layer here and then what I tend to do is lock that layer because there's many times uh, that I'll start painting and I end up painting on my on my sketch and that isn't necessarily what I want and then changing the composite method which is located here under the on the layers palette to multiply gives you transparency through the layers as you're working. So when you begin developing your painting either on the canvas layer or subsequent layers, you can still see the sketch coming through. So the first thing that I usually do when I start a painting like this, once the sketch is in, um, is, is that I like to tone my canvas. I like to have some color on it. There's nothing more intimidating than working on a canvas that is white. <laughs> so uh, go ahead and think about toning it and there's a couple of ways that we can do that. Uh, one of the ways is um, you can just simply fill your canvas with the color scheme that you feel you're going to be working in, that color range that you want to stay within. And you'll notice on my mixer pad that I pulled out just a few colors that I feel are probably the colors that I'm going to try and stay with because I want this to be kind of a moody painting in terms of being, uh, being able to emphasize the light coming from the background uh, and forward and having that light bounce off the trees and in uh, the middle ground and uh, foreground areas here. So with that said, I was thinking, I thought I would go probably with a blue value and start with that. So on my mixer pad, there's a little option here, a little tool, uh, uh, dropper tool that I can select and then I can use it to pick these colors here. And then if I need to do a little mixing or I want to get uh, the, hue, the hue to be different or the saturation or the value of that color to change, then I can use this little great little um, color wheel to do that with. So I'm going to go ahead and start with a little bit darker color. So I'm going to be picking this color. And there's a couple of options you have here. You can either use your paint bucket, uh, which is right on your toolbar here, or you can use a shortcut called uh, fill. And that is either control F with your with PC or command F uh, with uh, Mac. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and select OK. And now you can see on the canvas layer, 
I've got that color that I want to start off with. And you, you might say, well, it's a little bit dark, but I want to start off dark and kind of work to the mid values and then the light values. So with that said, um, I'm going to start next developing what we call the underpainting and getting in some of those shapes that are going to uh, tr be transformed into some of the trees and the, the foliage and the path. And all of this is done uh, by simply uh, using a brush that I really like in the, um, uh, let's see, it's called the block in. And let me see where that one is here. I think I had this one. Actually, I'm going to, uh, it's called the Oil Brush Texturizer, and it's from Campfire Essentials. And this is a really nice brush. Um, it picks up nice paper texture, but it's also kind of a, a loose, expressive brush where I can uh, really feel like I'm putting in, um, uh, really putting in those um, areas of light and dark that I want to start developing. And I also um, will mention here that I tend to use my Alt key a lot. The Alt key is really handy because it samples colors that you already have on your canvas. So if you don't want to have to keep going back and forth to a, uh, to a color palette here and you want to start just uh, start, start to pick colors that you actually see on your canvas, then use that Alt key. It's a real handy uh, tool to get you started. So with that, I'm going to just start with some of these colors here and lay in. It's not going to look like really much of anything at this point, but there's a method to the madness here. And I, I do like to start um, with darker values and then build to the mid values and then finally get into those highlight areas. And so I'm going to be just sampling some of these colors that I see uh, going on on my uh, mixer pad and start putting in some of those colors. And I'm going to work pretty fast here. So this is a nice brush for that, though, because it really gives you the opportunity to to work fast um, and to get those those large areas in pretty quick. So Karen, while you're doing that, I just am going to mention a couple things because I've had some questions. And yeah. as, as usual, everybody's always curious to know what tablet you're using or if you're using a mouse. But I know yeah. you're tablet. Yeah, no, I don't I don't use a mouse, but I do use the Wacom Intuos Pro. Um, I I think I mentioned yesterday that I was using a Cintiq at one time, but I felt that um, it really wasn't my cup of tea. Um, I tend to like the uh, process of using my monitor uh, as my visual path, and it just works better for me. Um, I do use a special Wacom pen, though, called the Art Pen, and that is a wonderful pen to use because it, it gives you 360-degree rotation on your brush stroke. So that is a, a real, uh, real key for me. Um, it's not essential to have that pen in Painter uh, or Painter Essentials, but it does give you the opportunity to get some really nice rotation on, on many of the brushes. And especially if you're working in Painter, it gives you that ability to actually set up rotation uh, to the max. Um, so there are some brushes that uh, because the brush is set to rotation, such as if you're putting in leaves on a tree, you have that ability to go from left to right, circular, um, up and down, and get those leaves or those grasses going in exactly the direction that your stylus is pointing. Okay, so uh, I keep it pretty simple. Um, I like uh, a little bit of friction on my uh, tablet. And with a new Wacom Intuos uh, Pro, you uh, five, it's a Intuos Pro 5, you have that ability to actually purchase um, little covers that go right over your, um, your uh, uh, stylus um, 
tablet and it gives you a little extra grit and makes it almost feel like you're really working with a pencil or a chalk or a pastel. It just adds that nice friction. So um, that's kind of where I where I where I am right now. So I'm always looking for new things, but uh, I've never had uh, really any problems with Wacom. It's always been kind of my go to brand. I know there's lots of other tablets out there. Um, I do have a little uh, bamboo tablet that I still have that I bring along with me when I'm traveling a lot of times. Uh, so that is a terrific um, tablet if you're just looking for, uh, you know, working in essentials where it, it, it <laughs> you don't need all the bells and whistles uh, like you do in Painter where things get a little more, uh, you know, there's just it's just a more powerful software. There's a couple of things in essentials that are kind of important to, to point out as well. And um, that would be that when you're blending, unlike painter, where if I add a layer here and I added more paint onto this layer and I started picking up a blender brush, it doesn't blend the same way that it does with painter where it blends through or picks up the underlying color of the layer below. So you have to remember that. So if you're gonna be doing some blending on your, on your paintings, it's okay to go ahead and add a layer and do that work on that layer. Nothing wrong with that. But when you come to the point where you wanna blend, it's always better to go ahead and drop that layer down and then uh, start to do your, uh, your, your blending. Were there any other questions? And feel yeah. free, to, yeah, feel free to just uh, come in anytime. It's not a problem. Okay, I'll just make a comment while you're painting because somebody had asked if the if you could actually create a traditional sketch and bring it in. And yes, yes you can if you would like to. And we support a variety of file formats. It could be a JPEG. Um, a PNG, a TIFF, a Photoshop file format. So you can certainly do that if that's what you prefer rather than creating the sketch in Essentials. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. that's it right now. I think we've got all the bases covered, so. Great, yeah, that's a really, a really good point. Um, I'm always bringing in things in Painter. Um, I've done it a few times with Painter Essentials as well. Um, so yeah, I, I bring in everything from uh, overlays to, uh, in fact, let me do something here, file uh, in, in this type of process, the, the, uh, what you would do here is go to file and then place. Uh, if you already had a sketch that you wanted to open up, you could certainly do that. Um, here's a canvas, for example. If I wanted to bring in a canvas, I could do that. Or um, here's some birds um, that I have in a PNG format. And I'll go ahead and bring those in and just to kind of show you how that works. And you can see that these are just the, sh the indication of some little birds on a layer. And um, I'll go ahead and right click and convert that to a default layer. But then I also, you know, the really key thing here is I can move these birds around and position them where I want. Or um, I can work with the composite methods and that is such a great uh, addition to Painter Essentials where you can go in now and choose different, um, you know, composite methods to change the effect there. So that's a, a real important option there. Okay, so um, let's, what we're going to do now is go to the two inch blender. And this is a real, real nice brush here. And um, I'm gonna be working on the canvas layer here. And I'm gonna just start doing a little bit of soft blending uh, on these edges here. And I'm always, you know, I, I oftentimes will just mess things up, uh, take blenders and go in and just uh, really um, distort the paint, move it all around, uh, soften edges where I feel like I need some softer edges. 
and I, I always think about color at the very beginning too. I always want to make sure that I have, that's why I oftentimes will just lay out a few colors because it helps me to stay disciplined within that color gamut. And, uh, you know, it's, it's far too easy to keep going over to your color set and, or your wheel here and picking a color here, picking a color there, where if I have a basic color set laid out, <clears throat> uh, basically are the values that I'm going to be using the colors that I'm going to be using, then I stay disciplined within that. And uh, I, I don't tend to, you know, go off on a tangent because <laughs> that can happen. I'm going to do one thing here, though. And then back to my two inch blender. I love this blender. It's a really one of my one of the nicest blenders I think in the sets. And we'll just give a little bit of atmosphere back here with some color. And now on this layer three, I'm going to pick up one of the brushes that's a little bit outside of this realm here. It's in the digital. Uh, it's in the airbrushes and it's called the Digital Soft Pressure Spray. And I'm going to use that to create my area of light here. I want this painting to be backlit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and fill in um, this area with, with a color that I've chosen already. And I'm going to start to use that area to reflect the colors that are going to be and the light that's going to be reflected on the trees. So I've chosen this kind of a um, ochre color here and I'm going to just go ahead and float that right into this area here. And you'll see how all of a sudden that area just starts to really begin to glow and um, that is my area of light that's going to dictate a lot of what's going on in the middle ground and foreground of the painting. And so I can always uh, adjust that now if I want with the um, with the opacity slider and bring it down a little bit or you know keep it where it is. Or later I can also experiment with composite method and see if there's something there that I'd like to go in a different direction with. So we're going to move over now to the uh, category called uh, sunset aglow and we're going to pick up uh, the brush called sunset foliage here and I'm going to again use uh, use my alt key to sample color here and I'm just going to start building in um, some of the uh, foliage into this area here and this brush is really the, you know you'll notice the edges are <clears throat> are kind of uh, uh, sporadic. They're kind of blown out on the edges, so it gives it a really highly texturized effect. And that's kind of what we're looking for here. And I'll be playing a little bit with color sampling. And I think I'll go a little darker with the color here. If a brush isn't behaving the way it should, uh, there's a little reset tool on your um, property bar here that you can select as well. Sometimes even when you buy new brushes um, and the brush isn't um, doing what you think it should do, try that reset tool because a lot of times that will just get it right back to where it needs to be. And so I'm just kind of developing these shapes of trees. And now I'm going to think about even taking my sketch off. I think what I'll do is actually bring the opacity down on that sketch a little bit.
And I'll probably come back to the same brush again, but a lot of times it's just fun to get a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of extra texture going on in there, color-wise. Karen, I'd love to remind everybody or just mention, because I, I feel like we have some new attendees here that may not have been on a webinar before, that Karen runs Digital Art Academy, and it's a wonderful resource for taking courses online. And I'd like to encourage all of you, I can pop that link into the chat window and into the questions panel for you. But if you haven't visited there, I would highly encourage you to do so because there's a lot of great courses, they're cost effective, and she also has just a ton of information on the website for people that are learning or looking to learn a little bit more about digital art. Yeah, and we have a, a, a really fun actual Bob Ross class going on right now too that's, um, could certainly do it in painter essentials too because it's all with the same brushes there's just a few things that are a little different in terms of some of the techniques but you could certainly do it with uh, essentials as well okay so How long does it take you to do a painting? You know, for me, <laughs> uh, it takes a while. So sometimes it's a little bit challenging to sit in and do a painting in an hour, but I'll try to be a Bob Ross and see if I can do that today. <laughs> All right. Let's move into... Um, Let's see what would be a good one here. Um, let's do one of my favorites here, the Impressionist Sunset. And we're going to use, um, I'm going to start off pretty dark um, with this. And I think I'm, I'll build a tree right in this area here. Now, I think I'm going to go over here a little bit and start this. And this brush is really um, a beautiful brush to use because it's so, uh, when you apply, let me just get the shape in here that I want to go with. This is really, that is really being just a little too dark for me or too light right now. I'm going to bring that back. I'm going to open that up again, but right now I'm going to get this tree shape in so I can show you how to best work with this brush. So I want these branches to just kind of be hanging really gently over this area just a wee bit. So when you put firm pressure on the brush, you get a little bit of a, a, a more saturated color, okay? But then when you use very light pressure with it, you get a, almost a, a blending, which is just beautiful to work with, with this brush. And it gives you a real nice little edge, kind of that of a, a fir tree. Let's start to get some shape in here. So firm pressure, lots of saturation, and soft pressure, just very, very light and blending. Now, one of the things with a tree, of course, is that it is very round, cylinder-shaped. 
So as your one of the one of the reasons I like to start with a darker color is because the darker helps you to bring out those mid values and that those lighter values and it keeps the roundness or the shape of the tree uh, going. So start dark and then build your shape. And it really helps to keep that uh, that round shape of the tree. Keeps the form going, keeps it very strong. And then from there, I'll start picking up additional color and building more trees back in the distance here. Vary your brush size too, that's important. Um, you know, it's not, it's not always advisable to work with one size brush through the whole painting. When it comes to details, your brush is going to get smaller and smaller. Um, when you're blocking in those shapes at the very start, your brush is going to be larger. Now here, I'm going to go over to another brush called the Sunset Fir. And this is a fir tree brush. It's uh, more with pine needles and, and I'm going to do it real light here so you can kind of see how I start. I start with just a small line at the top, very light pressure and then start building the shape of the fir tree as I work down. All is going to be a little darker value on this side, but I still want to maintain that feeling of roundness, the form of the tree. And I start utilizing now every value and shape that I can to create something new from it. So as you, I think part of this happens when you take the time to lay in that underpainting and those shapes, because from shape, from form, from shape becomes form and form becomes detail. Here's a color back here that I could capitalize on. So it's a little lighter value, but I want to continue to show space and distance. So I capitalize on that whenever I can. If I see a color emerge that I can create more distance into the background, then I'm going to do it. And then um, I'm still using the sunset fur, but look, I'm going to go back into that main tree here and just add a few little highlights to the edges and in lighter value because what this will do is it'll again emphasize that shape of the tree.
Everybody is so quiet today. <laughs> They're I mesmerized. Talk, I talked too much yesterday. <laughs> I didn't paint enough. <laughs> it's nice and relaxing. Yeah, hopefully um, just paint right along. It's fun. Now, this is the edges on here are a little bit hard for me. So I think what I would do is um, let me see. What do I want? I'll go back to the two inch blender here. And again, I'm on the canvas layer, but I'm just going to pull these very, very softly. Not a lot of pressure here. Just soften these edges a little bit. Let those just kind of fade out into the distance. So what we need to show and what we want to show here is that we've got this needs to be our main area landmass. And as we go back here into the distance, into this area, we want to make sure that this remains um, feeling as if it's in the distance. Um, sunset foliage, I'm going to go back to And then there's a brush that I want to show you here for uh, creating the look of some tree trunks. And that one is also uh, in uh, Sunset, uh, Sunset Aglow. Um, it is called Trunks. And it's a very highly expressive brush, so you have to kind of work with it real fast. But if I wanted to show maybe some tree trunks coming through here. Real quick way of doing it. And notice I'll just pick up color that I see here and use that same color to work into those areas. Okay, I'm going to bring my sketch up again one more time. And then at that point, I'll probably let it go. <clears throat> it's always, uh, you know, good to have your sketch because it helps you to keep on track, helps you to understand where you're going with your painting. Um, there's a little area here that I'm going to build up with a bit of foliage. And I like edges to be a little bit on the soft side, so we know that that light is going to be coming from this area, so we can capitalize on that a little bit later in the painting where we can pull out some more of those, those colors. And this little sunset foliage brush, again, it's just such a great brush for filling in those, you know, large areas of uh, foliage where you need them. And here, uh, again, I'll capitalize on paint that I already have in there, use that to give that feeling of maybe some distant foliage back here.
I'm going to use uh, Sunset Lake here for the path. Make sure I'm on it. And I want, you know, I'm not real concerned about going over areas. Remember, when you're working this way, it's a little more like working traditionally where you're working on a flat canvas. But you can always paint over those areas again. This is a very lovely brush as well. It's uh, more like an oil or acrylic. Um, very smooth application of paint. I'm thinking maybe I can pull a little texture in. Anytime you can take advantage of shapes that you see that you think might work in the painting and you, you know, take it to another level, then do it. I keep my navigator open a lot of the times because I like to be able to refer back to it to make sure that I'm not going too dark in certain areas. So you have to be careful of that. I'm thinking maybe I want the look of maybe some little bit of a cliff here, like some rocks going up. Go back to that <clears throat> sunset foliage, soften those edges a little bit. I don't have much time, do I? <laughs> I'll keep going here. Well, you still have 15 minutes. OK. <laughs> it's looking beautiful. Uh, OK. There's one called uh, Glassy Ocean here in the blue, uh, the blue moon that I like using too for um, kind of a, a blending type of brush. It uh, really is nice for going along your edges or pulling edges out, kind of fun and textural. So if you need to flatten an area out, it's a, Great for oceans and water. Let's see, I wanted to go here. There is one here called Campfire Sparks. 
that I often use just to create a little bit of atmosphere, uh, you know, the feeling of maybe some um, particles in the air. It's a, it's a, a fun brush that just creates a little bit of magic. Um, you know, you don't want to go too far overboard with it, but it's called that Disney magic where you add those little areas of um, just fun. You can use it for stars too in the sky. It works real well for that. Um, leafy trees is a good one for leaves. Uh, lodgepole is very similar to um, the trunks brush. So it, it's very similar. It has a little bit, um, little bit more control. Uh, you can use it for uh, trees like I'm doing here I'm just building up some trees and I think that's what I'm going to use for this area here so I'm going to go ahead and put in the basic shape of these trees right here so I can get those in pretty quick It's kind of a particle brush technology, so if you like those real fun, expressive brushes that uh, kind of take you on a trip every time you use them, uh, and you tend to be more of a loose painter, then it's a real good one, uh, real fun brush for that. Real nice for adding little highlights. Or even, uh, you know, filling in and putting in texture within certain parts of the painting. This is it would be a good one here for the uh, for the path. And then as you go back over it again, it kind of blends. So that's fun. I'm going to go over to the uh, shades of gray and for the tree here, I'm going to use the brush called Majestic Furs. And um, I'm just going to sample again, some of the color that I see here and kind of build up these tree shapes or tree um, leaves. This one is good for fir trees. Um, but it's also really nice for just creating, um, it's like a fan brush, very close to a fan brush. So you can use it just to create uh, nice leaves and foliage. See the nice thing with the um, art pen that I'm kind of, demonstrating here is that you see how I can flip the brush and go in different directions with it. I really wish Wacom would <laughs> have the art pen as their standard pen or include it because it's just such a such a great brush uh, stylus I should say. What was that? Just, I agree. They should just have that be the standard pen. I do. I, I really do. So we'll use that one here. Karen, do you know, because I don't know this, um, will the art pen work? 
I think they've had it forever on an Intuos 3 tablet. No, it will not. Okay. Um, it's Intuos 4 and above. Mm, okay. It works on your Cintiq. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, I have lots of students using it with Cintiq. So I do know it works with Cintiq, but uh, I've had it. Uh, I think it was one of the main reasons that I upgraded from, well, years ago when I was using an Intuos 3, but um, when the art pen came out and I saw that it was for the four only, that was my catalyst to <laughs> to go to a to a four. So I did. It's funny when you're, you know, when you have a, a pen, uh, a, you know, a stylus that's, and you know, like the Intuos four or the Intuos three. And everything's working fine for you. It's it's sometimes really hard to make that step to go into another tablet. But I think ultimately it comes down to you know support and are they going to support you know the that particular uh, tablet in the future? And you know you want to be careful of that. And all the time they're always coming up with new and wonderful. Um, additions and capabilities with these tablets so okay so again uh, this is a great majestic fur is one of my favorite fur trees and you can see that uh, starting dark and then going to your mids and then your lights um, as I go away from that light source, of course, I want to make sure I keep those colors a little darker. But it's so fun to be able to highlight those leaves and continue to keep that shape. I probably, you know, like I say, a lot of times I'll go back to a uh, uh, blender and do a little you know soft blending on the edges again you know you can always get away with more detail in this foreground area than you can in the background because in the background you want to create that feeling of distance so things are softer Okay, not too much time here left, but I'll try to finish this quickly here. Um, go with a little darker color here. This brush, Impressionist Sunset, also um, is a great brush for uh, creating uh, or using it for tree trunks. Um, I had done a couple of paintings where I used it to uh, create um, redwood trees, and it really, really did a good job with, uh, you know, the texture. Let's see, why are we doing that? There we go. So we'll go a little darker with that. Just take a little bit of that color up and and now I'm gonna bring that color down a little bit.
It doesn't have to be that strong. But now I can utilize it maybe in a smaller size and use it to highlight some of the edges of these trees just to give that feeling of light catching on the edges. And sometimes it can just be so subtle that it makes all the difference. And I'm going to go back to the foliage one more time and pull in a little bit of that down below. Yeah, and you know, if I had more time, I would be going into lots more detail, I think, but Are you using the medium sized tablet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what um, Douglas is wondering what size monitor you have? <laughs> well, I have, two, I use two monitors. Um, I have one 32 inch, which is my main monitor, and I have one 28 inch, which is my secondary. Okay. I wouldn't know what to do without two monitors. <laughs> I am so uh, so hooked on using two monitors now that it's uh, it would probably be really really difficult for me to to go off on two. Um, and Larry had a question that I can't answer because I don't paint enough, but he's wondering how do you know when to replace the nib in the pen? Well, I'll tell you what nib I use. I use a felt tip nib nib. Um, not a, I, I think a lot of my students use the felt tip also, probably only because I said that I've used it, but I really like using the felt tip because it feels more natural to me. Uh, it feels more like working on um, uh, paper on a on a canvas or paper. So for me, it's uh, it's a good one. I have to, um, you know, it's a good question because. Um, there are some people that I talk to that, you know, they say, um, I never have to change, you know, I rarely change my monitor or my uh, stylus. And then there's others that say that they, uh, you know, have to do it all the time. So it's really a matter of um, the type of nib you use, the plastic nibs, the hard nibs will tend to last a lot longer. Um, the, the felt tip nibs do not last as long. They really don't. Um, I usually replace mine about quarterly, so maybe every three months or so is when I uh, go for a new nib. And the reason I know that it needs to be replaced is because it actually looks, you know, very worn down or, you know, or I'm just not getting the, the uh, type of... Um, uh, you know, the brush stroke that I would be looking for that I would typically get from it. It just doesn't feel or it just doesn't feel right or it's not coming out right the way I think it should. So the felt tips you can buy from Wacom uh, on online as well. Okay. And okay. I have one question. We did a good job of addressing everything along the way. Can you recommend which brush is good for grasses, for long grasses? Well, I have one here in uh, Blue Moon, I believe. It's called um, uh, Beach Grasses. Let me see if I can get to it here. Let me reset it. Uh, and let me let me demonstrate it real quick here for you so you can kind of get an idea. Let me go a little lighter here. Um, the thing with this brush is that you have to you have to work with it in this fashion, okay? Because if you go back the other way, you see how it repeats it? So if you were looking, you know, it's kind of 
fun because if you're looking at it for a, a reflection in a river or a reflection in a lake or something like that, then it's a really nice brush to use because when you use it this way and go in one direction, like I'm moving to the, to the right with it, and then you go back to the left, you see how it creates that uh, reflective quality. So you just have to remember when you're going to use it that you work with it always in one direction, okay? like this and just work very lightly with it but in one direction because when you go back the other direction you can see that it's reversed all right and it was intentionally done that way specifically for that reason in, in case you wanted to be able to show uh, reflections so it's a it's a nice brush just when you use it that is the tip that I would tell you is just to make sure that um, you're always going in this direction to the right. If you're going to show it as a reflection, you come back to the left. Okay, but it's a nice brush for grasses. And you just have to, you know, what I would do is probably do it, do it on a layer first, so you get a good feel for it. And uh, you're getting the effect you want. You know, maybe if I wanted a bunch of grasses out here. And I'm just kind of working really quick and pulling it out. Can you see that? Let me zoom in just a little bit closer here. And then you could just do layers and layers of grasses and you would just go back, but just make sure you're going in that one direction there. And if you put firmer pressure on it, you're going to get taller grasses and soft pressure, you're going to get shorter grasses. So um, that would be the comparable one to uh, the painter brush, which is also in the um, Impressionist Sunset. It's called uh, Sunset Grasses. That would be the painter version of it. Beach grasses, it, you'll find in uh, Blue Moon Essentials. And I think the last thing I'm going to do here, let's just say we wanted to, uh, we'll finish this off with a, a moon up in the sky. Let's say we turned this from a day to a night scene. And so we just put pressure on that and we get a nice moon up in the sky. And then, of course, we can play with different, um, you know, composite methods with that, add a few stars up in the sky. And um, there's one in here in Blue Moon Essentials called Stars. And you can just float. I'll make that a little smaller. Those are too big. And just put some stars up in the sky. Okay. So that's about all I can get done with it <laughs> now yeah, in our time frame. But I, I obviously would go a lot, lot farther with this. But <laughs> well, it's, thank you so much. Um, I know that everybody really enjoyed this because when they're quiet and they're observing <laughs> and I check and make sure and I can see that they're uh, they're paying attention, we know that it was really, really good. So um, thank you so much. There, there were a couple questions about yeah. the Bob. Well, it's more related to these packs. People are asking if they get the essentials packs, will they work in Painter? Um, yes. You can bring your essentials packs into Painter. We do have two separate brush packs. Some are made for Painter, some are made for essentials, and Painter has five more brushes. And reason being, you have a little bit more flexibility for different painting methods in Painter than you do in essentials. But not to worry, if you wanna bring those brushes over, when you decide to upgrade, you most certainly can. And Two days left to buy the Bob Ross brush packs. They're not available in any of the bundles, the ultimate bundles. I also had that question. So you either buy the separate bundles or the separate packs and two days from now, they're gone forever. Yes. So, <laughs> so we hope that you can enjoy them. If you buy them, you can enjoy them forever. But for those of you that don't, sorry, we're not gonna bring them back. 
Um, and please also take a look at Digital Art Academy. Karen has a Bob Ross brush course going on, or painting course going on right now, along with a whole lot of other courses that, for those of you that are beginners, you can learn a ton over at Digital Art Academy. So please, please visit there. And it's five minutes after. We started five, well, seven. We started late, so you're perfectly on time, Karen. Okay. <laughs> And thank you so much. All right. And thanks for everybody for joining today. Thank you, Tanya. All right. Have a great day, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and close down, and you'll find the webinar up on our YouTube channel a little bit later today. Take care. Bye. Bye.